Welcome to another UCL Fantasy team selection video ahead of match day three. I'll be discussing my match day two performance and then discussing my transfer plans, how my team would look like without the wild card and what I would probably wild card to at this moment in time. So be sure to drop this video a like. Let's try to get this to over 300 likes in total and we're very close to 15,000 subscribers. So if you are new to the channel, then consider subscribing. It really helps out in the algorithm and it'd be very much appreciated. So let's just jump straight into this video. I scored 80 points in match day two and I activated the limitless and it was fairly underwhelming but you also have to think about the match day in general. It wasn't that high scoring and I probably would have scored 40 to 50 points without using the limitless so I did gain something from it but as we talked about heading into match day two, I actually prefer the fixtures for match days three and four. But you also have to think about your strategy, the way your team is set up. And my team just wasn't that good in match day two because I really built it for match day one. I had an incredible start as a result. So it just depends on how you structured your team with the selections you made. And that's why I don't really regret it. And everyone in my starting 11, bar Trent Alexander-Arnold, returned but there were no double digit returns with 10 pointers or more. And that's why the ceiling and the amount of points I got in general, maybe wasn't that high as we would have expected. Neymar scored a goal, but got booked a bit oddly for his celebration. You have Mbappe, who to be honest, scored a goal and he played a very big part in Messi's goal. But I don't know how he won the Man of the Match award. It was obviously kind of lucky for those who captained Mbappe, but I have to say it was undeserved in my opinion. Then you have Haaland scoring as usual. He was very quiet. Dortmund were doing a great job keeping him at bay. But in the last 10 minutes or so, Man City turned it up and Erling Haaland, as always, is just inevitable at this point. Kevin De Bruyne was the one who set him up and he won the Man of the Match award. That's his second in two games now. So he makes for a really good use your fantasy option. And Man City face Copenhagen next back to back in match days three and four so the likes of Kevin De Bruyne, Haaland and Cancelo are probably fairly locked in most of our teams at this point then you have Leroy Sane and people always say why do you like Sane so much but look what he did last season he was the highest scoring midfielder and you know he didn't even reach the final for example otherwise he could have probably reached 100 points to be fair and he offers such great value he's only 9 million he's one of the best UCL fantasy assets even better than Mane in my opinion and he's significantly cheaper, so there's so much to like with Sane. And he scored yet again against Barcelona in Bayern Munich's triumph. And then you have Mohamed Salah finally returning. And maybe a bit of confidence restored in these Liverpool assets, especially Salah. And Liverpool look much better with Thiago returning to the side. Then Vinicius Jr. picked up a clean sheet and an assist. And Real Madrid are just looking comfortable. They've got some good defensive options like Carvajal. They've got Courtois in goal. Benzema when he returns up front and then you've got Vinicius Jr. in the midfield so they boast plenty of options Real Madrid and that's not to mention the likes of Modric who's a really good mid price midfielder then you have Trent Alexander-Arnold a bit disappointing yet again but I actually would still back him against Rangers in match days three and four and Liverpool I think will start to turn things around slowly but surely maybe not reach the heights of last season but still be a solid team in the Champions League then you've got Theo Hernandez picking up an assist after a very disappointing goal conceded by AC Milan and I wasn't too bothered by it on paper because a lot of people had Manyan and Theo Hernandez as a double up so him getting the assist and no clean sheet wasn't the worst thing in the world then you have Joao Cancelo picking up an assist I mean he's such a great player in UCL fantasy and you look at the ball recoveries he always offers you that and it was actually one ball recovery away from an extra point and then Onana in goal got the clean sheet so I didn't need to bring Courtois on uh, but he ended up getting seven points and look it's just one point missed out I don't mind that too much and ultimately those were two of the best goalkeepers in the limitless in match day two as we discussed so very happy with my team overall despite no huge returns and maybe no 100 pointers overall which uh, I was kind of seeking with the limitless which would have definitely been a big game changer but I still got a significant rank rise from around 10,000 I believe all the way up to 2,000 so it's been a very good start to the season and now I am looking at possibly using the wild card and cementing my position further and perhaps creeping into the top 1k but that's obviously easier said than done there's a lot of competition and now let me show you how my team looks like in match day three without using any transfers. The more I look at this team, the more I actually like it. There's some good fixtures. There are also some great UCL fantasy options such as Erling Haaland, Lewandowski, Cancelo and arguably the likes of Bergwijn and Vinicius Jr. This actually looks pretty good and the likes of Nkuku has been very disappointing so far this season. He faces Celtic so there's definitely room for some points there but then when you compare it to the wildcard team that's where things can maybe fall flat and you could actually fall behind. Let's say for example I don't play the wildcard. I could fall behind a lot of these wildcarders and you know suffer as a result if I decide to stick with this and only use two free transfers but of course it still is a good team despite the fact that 
It obviously has no chip included, but I am very wary that I could lag behind. So Haaland would be my captain on the second day, with Lewandowski being my first day captain. That kind of speaks for itself. And I always talk about the balance. You know, try to have, if you can, six players at least on one day and then nine in the other. I ideally would say eight and seven, but nine and six is fine enough as well. It's just when you get to a situation where you only have three players on a certain day, especially on a Tuesday, for example, that really limits your ceiling and how many points you can get gain by making substitutions remember you can do that and you can also change your captain but it has to be a player who played on the Tuesday and then you can switch it to someone who plays on the Wednesday it can't be someone who has already featured and played their match but as you can see this is looking pretty good Broby is a very disappointing asset and I talked about Jukla instead and I should have gone for him I talked a lot about him in pre-season Jukla has 16 points so far whilst Broby is just coming off the bench and not really making an impact then you look at Steven Bergwijn, who has had an incredible start to life at Ajax, and I'm happy to have him, to be honest. He's still one of the best options at his price, but when we talk about what I'm missing from my team, it's probably a PSG asset, especially in the forward line. Even Messi, he's having an incredible season. You look at Neymar, who has been assisting and scoring every single game, and Mbappe, who is their best goal scorer at the moment. So I'm missing those assets. I'm also missing Sane in the midfield. I think that's arguably the biggest loss. And then maybe someone like De Bruyne, who's facing Copenhagen back to back. So as you can see, having that third City asset could also be very crucial. And whilst I could still do that with free transfers, would I want to do Vinicius Junior to De Bruyne? Not really. I don't think that's worth it. I would rather just change the whole structure on my team and make some improvements accordingly. And my defense, I have to say, is probably the weakest part of my team. You look at Ray Nildo and he did get a clean sheet in match day two, but that was very lucky. He came off before Atletico Madrid conceded. I don't trust the Spanish side right now, so I honestly would like to sell him. You look at Otamendi and to be honest, I really like him anyway, despite facing PSG back to back because he can get those ball recoveries and still get you at least four points or more every single match day. And at his price and below, there aren't many better options, to be fair. But then you look at Guerrero. He is facing Sevilla, and that isn't too bad, considering how poor Sevilla have been so far this season. But I don't trust Dortmund that much defensively to have him for the rest of the group stages. And not only that, in match day five, they play Manchester City. So I think wildcarding him out would definitely be a good move, or even transferring him out, to be fair. And then you look at the other defender, Kunde, and he's facing Inter back-to-back -back and then Bayern Munich in match day five. So really the fix you'd want to have him for is match day six against Pilsen. But if Barcelona qualify by then, which to be honest might not be the case, uh, then he is going to be benched. But let's wait and see, of course. That's a really long way down the road. But it's something worth noting because when you wildcard now, you can sort out the issues that will arise in future match days as well. Of course, you can't always have a perfect setup. You're always going to have complications in match day six, which tends to be very popular in terms of kind of rotation for these teams that have already qualified but it's something worth noting and then you look at Gribic who isn't going to start now with Oblak now he should be fully back in match day three against Club Bruges so I lack a second goalkeeper I've got a fairly weak defense I would say and then I've got a few options that have been very underperforming to be honest like in Cuckoo for example and I'd rather have Sane at the same price I can rectify some of these aspects with free transfers but I think I could do a major overhaul I'm going to show you my wildcard team now for match day three, and I also discussed this in the best wildcard team video. Be sure to check that out, as well as the best limitless team video. So there's more UCL fantasy content headed your way, along with the deadline stream on the Tuesday. So be sure to stay tuned for that. And another one to mention actually is João Mario, who hauled in match day two, but when I had him in match day one, he was very underwhelming, and now he faces PSG back to back. So as you can see, plenty of problems. Not the worst team in the world, but at the same time, I think I can make really big upgrades. On the wildcard, I will be making 11 changes, which includes two forward changes, the entire midfield being overhauled. Then you look at three new defenders and one new goalkeeper. And I think it ultimately is worth it. So Adan will be coming in for Gribic. I think that's worthwhile. Sporting Lisbon have been looking very solid defensively and they've got some good fixtures in match days three and four, despite the matchup with Tottenham in match day five, where I expect Tottenham to get revenge. Then you look at Lucas Hernandez, Matip and Carvajal coming in for Reinildo, Kunde, and I would keep Otamendi, but get rid of Guerrero instead. Of course, that is definitely something I need to think about because Otamendi is facing PSG after all, but I do like the ball recoveries and what Otamendi offers in that regard and then I'd be getting rid of Bergwijn, Joao Mario, Hoiberg, Nkunku 
and Vinicius Jr., who I still think is a great option, by the way. And I'd bring in De Bruyne, who's facing Copenhagen back-to-back. Leroy Sane, who's facing Pilsen back-to-back. So these Bayern Munich and Man City assets is what you really want to load up on. At least two of each team. And I would go for a triple up in City and either two or three Bayern Munich players. Then uh, Kudus would come in from Ajax. He's a nice, cheap enabler, along with Florentino, who can get those ball recoveries and four to five points every single match day. And Joshua Kimmich, who is fairly cheap. He is a holding midfielder, but he can get those assists, and he's really good with the ball recovery. So he's another great UCL fantasy option. And then up front, I would get Mbappe and Jukla in for Broby and Lewandowski. And I think it's ultimately an upgrade, but it's very similar. So Broby doesn't even play matches. He comes off the bench, so that's fine. I think Jukla is an upgrade. And maybe what I'm missing is a third forward because you have so many options in UCL fantasy this season. I could maybe drop someone like De Bruyne for a cheaper midfielder and then go for Lewandowski on top of Mbappe and Erling Haaland. And it also gives me another option for the captaincy on the Tuesday, in this case, the 4th of October, and I would have variations from the Man City and PSG players. But there's always going to be pros and cons behind these moves because De Bruyne is looking like a really good option against Copenhagen. So... So let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. And also, it'd be very difficult because I think it requires another downgrade. So if we actually go through this right now live. So if we downgrade De Bruyne, let's let's get Lewandowski in from the beginning. So we bring him in. Now we only have 4.9 million remaining. And I'm not a big fan, even in UCL Fantasy, of having a really cheap midfield. So as you can see here, I've got Leroy Sane, but then the rest of my midfield would comprise of Kudos, a 5.2 million option. Then you look at Florentino, 4.5 million, and then Kimmich. And then another 4.9 million option. I don't like that balance. And I would like to have a bit more money invested in the midfield. And that's why as much as I'd love to have Lewandowski, I have to probably go for a cheaper option. And I think Jukla is the best one. He's an enabler. And I think he can get plenty of goals, even against Atletico Madrid, who have been struggling this season. So I could either go for Vinicius Jr. or De Bruyne. And I probably would go for Kevin De Bruyne. But of course, there's nothing wrong with going for Vinicius. So let me know what you think of that. But ultimately, I would go for a wildcard team like this right now. Things can change by the deadline stream, so be sure to tune in for that and you will see my final team after the deadline. And I appreciate everyone who has been commenting, supporting the channel, all the new channel members and also all the subscribers. So if you enjoyed this video or found it useful, be sure to smash the like button and subscribe for new. Let's get this video to over 300 likes and we're very close to 15,000 subscribers. So let's keep on pushing. And if you have any recommendations or feedback for the content, then be sure to let me know. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram, DylanRCM, and also become a patron or a channel member. The links are in the description below. The same goes for the UCL Fantasy League and the Discord server. So be sure to check all of that out. And I wish you all the best of luck for Match Day 3 and the rest of the season. And I'll see you next time.